Well, you know, the, the Zinke property, if you, if you are not familiar with it, um, we're going to have a public meeting. In fact, it'll be, uh, we're having an executive session next week to talk about, we had an independent audit done on that. Um, I think what you're going to, to me, the lesson learned uh, precisely is probably more in the communications arena. Um, we didn't do a very good job when um, information came out that looked like it appeared to be adverse. And sometimes when the toothpaste comes out of the tube, it's very hard to get it back in. Information gets out that's incorrect. And and you can't, it, it, you, no matter how you try to go to defend it or say that's not correct, it's very hard to argue with somebody that, you know, um, produces uh, newspapers to <laughs> buy the roll and the barrels of ink and, uh, you, you know, you can't outspend them. Um, what we have found is, is uh, if we just stick with the facts and uh, we'll get the facts out to the community and let them make a decision whether they think it was um, a good thing or not, that's what we're going to do. In hindsight, we probably should have uh, uh, ensured that we, number one, had a crisis communication plan in place that we could uh, we could ex- you know, quickly respond with information. Number two is um, we had assumed, you know, what happens when you assume? Uh, we had assumed that there was um, a, that was a standard practice was to do appraisals on the property, because we had typically seen appraisals on everything, and uh, and so when you do. We do transactions every week, dozens and dozens, and so you uh, trust your staff that they're doing what they should be doing, and and uh, they're getting appraisals and, and handling those things properly. And uh, you don't, as a policymaker, you can't dig into every single legal case, and you know that's why you have good, you hire good people, and they work around the clock during the day uh, to do things right. Um, we found out that they had not done an appraisal, which uh, um, it wasn't required by procedure, but it's still a good practice, and it's just a good business practice. And we were a little baffled about why you would ever do that and not do an appraisal. Um, and when we went to um, the person that was um, responsible for that, had been already been uh, let go by the town and, and was no longer working at the town, so... Um, um, there wasn't much we could do as far as holding somebody, you know, the person accountable that, that did that. But what we could do is make sure it doesn't happen again. And so we we changed our policies and put in a policy in place that requires uh, an appraisal done on any kind of land, any kind of land transaction, so uh, that doesn't happen again. So sometimes, uh, you know, it's like mess up, um, mess up, and and uh, try to learn from the experience and, and move forward. I think what you'll find on the Zinke property, and you'll, it'll be um, discussed in a public meeting, is that. Um, the newspaper had, uh, they, when they looked at um, surrounding valuations, and said, "Well, boy, there was there was transactions made that were a lot lower than what you guys pay for that property." Those, what they looked at, were book values. There were some there were some transactions that were done on book. They were never actual property sold and purchased. Um, and they were um, there was people that did trading on the books, and so they just took a, a number on the book. And, and so, um, what we did find out, we did actually find some. Um, some appraisals that were done back then, and some actual property uh, purchases that were done, uh, the sizable, and it was the same amount of money that um, are very similar to what we'd paid. So, when you look at actual sales and um, purchases, uh, um, I think it was, it was much more in line than what was presented. The other thing is we had an un, un, um, un, uh, we had a person that didn't want to sell his property. Uh, he was unwilling. Um, we had a lot of complaints from the neighbors about the dairies. They didn't like the smell, they didn't like the flies, they wanted something different. We were trying to compile some property down the south end to uh, service the uh, needs of the people in the south end of town. We were getting a lot of complaints from people saying, you're taking care of everybody up north, the south end of Gilbert's being ignored. And how come we have to travel clear across town every time we want to use a park or something, we don't have anything down here. And so we were trying to do the right thing and, 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 and assemble some property together that would service the south end of town. And... Uh, and so we had this opportunity to get rid of this dairy and to pull together some some property in the one piece and, and provide the needs uh, for the people in the south. And um, and also we had we had, did have a uh, one purchaser that was had a bid on the table that wanted to put more apartments in, and we felt like we were apartment saturated in the community and knew that um, it wouldn't be. Uh, Apartments were probably not going to be accepted real well in the, in the neighborhood down there. It's more of a rural area, and people, the last thing they want is, is apartments in a, in a rural um, setting. And so um, yeah, this, it just made sense to us at the time, and we made the purchase. So in 
in hindsight, uh, better communications, making sure that we have the, the appraisals done, which we've done, we fixed that. And uh, I guess the person's ultimately been held accountable, <laughs> no longer works here. And, um, and uh, making sure we have a crisis communication plan, which I'm helping the town manager right now in developing the plan so we can quickly respond with factual information and people can make the decisions based on facts.